Okay, so welcome to August Stitch Guide. This month we're going to be looking at stitches that can be used to stand alone. And some of these are filling stitches, some of them are purely decorative, but these are stitches that can make shapes specifically. So we're going to start by recapping some familiar stitches that we've seen before so the first one we looked at back in February when we looked at loop stitches and that's a buttonhole wheel and I'm going to do this on this circle here I've marked the center you don't have to do it to the center you can get some quite nice effects by having your stitches meet off center towards one of the edges but I'm just going to do it at the centre just to show you. So we're going to work blanket stitch in a circle always passing through this central point. So I've brought my thread up at the edge and I'm going to go back down at the centre and pull through until I have a loop. So I've brought up my needle on the edge of the circle inside that loop and pull it through and the working thread catches that loop and pulls it into an angle around the outside edge of the circle. So again through at the centre, pull through to a loop, bring my needle up at the edge inside the loop and pull through. So down at the centre again, pull through to make a loop up at the edge inside the loop and pull through and we just work our way around the circle like that. The trick with this stitch is to try and space your blanket stitches evenly and then you get a nice set of spokes on your wheel. I am working at a strange angle for filming so you'll have to excuse me if mine looks a bit wonky. And then to finish off you just take your thread through to the back and secure it. So that's a blanket stitch wheel that one should feel quite familiar. So the next one I'm going to recap is a lazy daisy and this is made from chain stitches detached chain stitches so we're going to bring our thread up in the center of the circle take it back down at the center of the circle pull through to make a loop then we're going to bring our needle up on the outside edge of our circle inside that loop and then we're just going to take our needle back down just the other side of the thread of our loop to catch that stitch in place. Now I find I get a better looking flower if I work opposites. So we're just going to repeat that process. So up at the centre, down at the centre, pull through to make a loop, up inside the loop on the edge of the circle and back down just the other side of the thread of our loop. And we don't want to pull too tight because we want to keep that loop shape that's going to create our petals. And you can put as many of these in as you want to. I've got quite a large circle here so I think I'm going to do eight. But smaller circles you could do five or six it depends on whether you like odd numbers of petals or even and again this one should feel very familiar because we have looked at this before back in February so we'll link that video at the top of the screen if you want a more detailed description of these two stitches. We did it much more slowly back in February. Just got a little rogue thread there. So 
Now both of these look really nice with a bead or some French knots at the centre. It's a really nice way to finish off that stitch. Now the next stitch I'm going to work on this leaf shape here and this is one of my absolute favourite stitches. It's called fishbone stitch. So we're going to start off coming up right on the point there and we're going to make a straight stitch down to about halfway down our leaf shape right down the centre. Now I'm going to bring my needle back up on the outside edge just down and to the left of that first stitch and pull through and I'm going to take it back down just below and to the right of that first straight stitch so my stitch is going to cross over that first stitch ever so slightly like that now I'm going to come up on the right hand side of that first stitch straight across from that second stitch that I put in, the first diagonal stitch. So just down and to the right of my starting straight stitch. And this time I'm going to go across to the left and just below my first straight stitch. So I'm crossing back in the other direction like that. And we just keep repeating that all the way down. So top left just below the previous stitch on the left hand line and we're going to go down to the right just below where that stitch ended and then we come up on the top right line and come down just on the left and then up again on the left I'm going to keep these stitches as close together as possible. Down on the right. Up on the right. And down on the left. Up on the left. And down on the right, up on the right, and down on the left. So we're always working just below the previous stitch on whatever side our needle is coming up or going down. This is quite a thread hungry stitch so it will take more thread than you think it ought to. And as we pass that halfway mark we start covering up the crossover section that, that doesn't look very good. And you can see there's a sort of vein forming down the centre of the leaf where the stitches cross over each other. It's such a lovely stitch this. So we're always using our outline as our guide as we work our way down. And then when we've completely covered our shape, we can just take our thread through to the back and finish off. And that's fishbone stitch. So similar to fishbone stitch is a stitch called Rhodes stitch. And I'm going to work that one in this circle here. And this one can fill any shape, really, a little bit like fishbone stitch. I'm going to work it in a circle. And this one you get a lovely sort of knotted effect in the center and it is just straight stitches so what we're going to do is work right across our circle I'm just laying my thread just so I can get the line right and we're going to work straight across the center of our circle 
Now I'm going to move slightly to the left, just like I did with fishbone stitch, and bring my needle back up. And then I'm going to go down slightly to the right on the opposite edge. And now I'm going to come back up to the left of that previous stitch and go down to the right. And so we're using that crossover technique again, but this time we're working across the whole of the shape. And this works, you can, you can make literally any shape. We use this stitch in our alphabet kit to make the hearts for letter H. But it is just straight stitches and you can see already that twist is beginning to form at the centre. It's quite a textured stitch, it sits up from the fabric in a really lovely way. So again it's quite thread hungry this one because you're working the full length of the stitch on the back as well as on the front. Now what should happen is that your gaps close up on either side of the circle at the same time but because I'm working at a strange angle I've left a little bit more space on one side than the other but if that happens you just keep stitching around until the gap closes up. we go so i hope you can see you've got that lovely sort of twist effect that's formed in the center and it looks slightly different on circles to how it looks on squares and triangles but that's road stitch so worked round in a spiral so the next one we're going to look at i'm going to work on this triangle at the top here and it's called a crow's foot and it's worked in a, a very similar way again. So we're gonna start down at this bottom left corner. And we're going to go up to just down the right hand edge from the top point. So we don't go straight into the point at the top, we're just coming down the right hand edge ever so slightly. And now we're going to come back out at the point like that. Now we're going to come down this edge, but we're going to not go into the point. We're going to go slightly along the bottom edge, just to the left of the point. And then we're going to bring our needle back up at the point of the triangle. Now we're going to come across to just above this bottom left point. And we're going to bring our needle back up just to the right of that point. Then we're coming across to here, down the right hand side, just down from the top point, and then we're bringing our needle up on the outer edge of the triangle, just to the left of the top.
so you can see it's working in a similar way to the way fishbone stitch worked but this time we're forming a triangle as we go we're always crisscrossing over in the same direction And as we get to the centre, we get a little extra triangle forming on the surface. Like that. So we've got our main triangle in the background, but then we've got this extra little triangle that's formed on the surface. So that's a crow's foot. So the next one is very similar. I'm going to work this on this next triangle here. It's worked in a similar way, but we're only going going to work around really two of the points or along two of the sides I should say so again I'm going to start in exactly the same way so I'm going to come up at the bottom left point and I'm going to go through just down right hand side from the top point and then I'm going to bring my needle back up at the point of the triangle and then I'm going to go back down at the third point of the triangle. So we've just made a little crisscross there just across the top. So now I'm going to come up at my first point, this bottom left point, but slightly along the bottom line of my triangle. And I'm going to go down just slightly down to the right from my top point then I'm going to bring my needle up slightly to the left and down the left hand side from that top point and take my needle back down just to the left of this bottom right point here like that so now we've got an overlapping crisscross so now I'll bring my needle up just to the right of this stitch just to the right of the bottom corner crisscross over to the top right hand edge and take my needle down just below that previous stitch come across to the left hand edge and back down just to the left of the bottom right hand corner tucking my stitches neatly together. Across again just to the right of the bottom left corner up to the top right edge over to the left edge and back down to the right hand side of my bottom line tucking my stitch right next to the previous one and we just keep making that crisscross action. And then when your stitches have met at the centre, along that bottom line, you take your needle through to the back 
and finish off and there we get a lovely sort of triangular shape with this chevron fishbone section along the top so that's a sprat's head okay so i'm going to show you the next stitch on this square here and this is called star stitch and it's exactly as you imagine it would be so we're going to start right in the center of the top edge of our square and go straight across the, the middle and almost cut that square in half with our stitch so straight stitch across the middle then i'm going to do a straight stitch horizontally across the center and then I'm going to come up on the bottom diagonal bottom right diagonal corner and go across the top left across the top right and down to the bottom left now if you want to you could add in some extra points on your star but I'm just going to leave it with that. Now I'm going to bring my needle up really close to the centre underneath those stitches and I'm going to take my needle over the top of all of the stitches and back down at the centre and that just puts a little anchor stitch in to hold all of those in place. So that's star stitch, really really simple one. Now a variation on that is a stitch called Algerian Eye and I want to show you that one on this square here. So this time I'm going to start at the top left diagonal and I'm going to take my needle down at the centre of the square. Now I'm going to come to my due north, the top 12 o'clock position on my square and go down at the centre again. Now I'm going to come up top right corner and go down at the centre. I'm going to come up due east, back down at the centre, south east. down at the centre, south, down at the centre, south west, and west. And that's an Algerian eye and you might just be able to see if I move my finger that there's a hole now at the centre because all of our stitches pull back and pull that centre point away from itself it creates a little eyelet which is why it's called an Algerian eye so I'm hoping you can see that tiny little dot at the centre flushing as I move my finger back and forth behind it so that's why it's called an Algerian eye it's, it's a sort of way of forming an eyelet now this is our last one that we're sort of doing in a circle here and this one's slightly more complicated so the first thing we're going to do is create a triangle just with straight stitches so I've gone A to B and then I'm going to go C to B and then A to C like that so I've got my base in place there and this one is worked with a double layer of thread so if you're using six strand embroidery floss you can use all six strands i'm using a sheepies maxi sweet treat thread here and i've just doubled it up in my needle 
and I'm going to bring my thread up just inside the corner there of my triangle and I'm going to loop my thread around the bottom to create a bit of a loop there and slide my needle underneath that bottom line of my triangle bottom edge and make sure my needle comes up inside the loop that I've made so I'm effectively making a blanket stitch on that bottom bar of my triangle then I'm going to do that again and do it again And I'm going to create, because this is quite a, a large triangle, I'm going to do five blanket stitches on each edge. So now I am going to do another five on this left hand edge. So I'm not going through the fabric, I'm just sliding my needle underneath the bar. And bringing it up inside the loop. There's five on that edge and again it's easier if you can turn your work on in a table clamp so it's I have to make some funny angles but hopefully you can see what I'm doing. three, there's four, and there's five. So now I've got my first set of stitches and they're sort of pulling round almost into a circle. If it was smaller it would be much more circular than that. So this time I'm going to go around again but I'm going to work into that first line of blanket stitches so that horizontal thread of my first blanket stitch so I've got my vertical thread here and my horizontal here I want to take my needle in between the verticals underneath that horizontal stitch and pull through And then I'm going to find the space between the verticals again, take my needle under the horizontal and make another blanket stitch. So now I'm going along my second side. So now I can take my needle back through to the centre. Now I've made a large one here to help you see the effect and to see the technique. I'm just going to make a really small one and you'll be able to see the sort of cup shape a lot better. There we go, so that's a smaller one, that's just with two blanket stitches on each arm. You can see it forms a much more sort of round cup shape. So this one is not a great example, but I was trying I wanted to do a larger version so that you could see the technique and um, it's very hard to see it on such a small one. So that's the way it should look.
So the last few, I'm just going to show you between these two lines here. So the first one I'm going to show you is called Ermine Stitch. And you can use this as a fill stitch. It's another one based around straight stitches. But we're going to do a vertical straight stitch between our two lines. Then I'm going to come up. diagonally down from the top of that stitch and to the left and I'm going to cross over a lot closer to that centre stitch but to the right and I'm going to slide my needle across horizontally back to the left so that the straight stitch that I started with is right in between where the needle goes in and where it comes out so I'm going to make a short straight stitch on the back of my fabric and pull through and I've got that sort of diagonal line across and then I want to take my needle back up to the right straight across from that first diagonal stitch but this time over to the right so we've got a little sort of star vertical stitch with a, an asymmetric cross on it so I'll just show you that again we're going to go make a vertical straight stitch then we're going to go up and to the left of that straight stitch and down just to the right and then slide our needle across to the left on the back underneath that straight stitch and then take our needle back up to the right diagonally so it's a straight stitch with an asymmetric cross just once more so we'll just do a vertical straight stitch between our two lines over to the left then down just to the right of that centre line slide the needle under just to the left of that centre line and then up again to the right diagonally across so that's our mine stitch that's a, a cute little standalone stitch our last one is a really cute stitch and again it's made of straight stitches so we're going to make three vertical straight stitches close together but not necessarily touching so we've got uh, three straight stitches now I'm going to bring my needle up underneath them I'm angling it sort of very shallow on a very shallow diagonal up so I'm right in the center of those stitches at the back and I'm sliding my needle so that it comes out underneath those three and then I'm going to do the reverse I'm going to go down on a diagonal so that my needle goes through underneath those three stitches and I'm just going to put a horizontal bar across the centre and when I pull it pulls our three stitches in at the centre this one's called sheaf stitch so let me just show you that one again so we're going to do three vertical straight stitches space them a bit more widely so that you can see the effect a little bit more clearly then I'm going to slide my needle so that it it's actually coming out right underneath that centre bar at the back but it emerges from the left of my three straight stitches and then we're going to slide our needle under and down at the centre again but this time to the right I'm going to pull through 
uh, straight stitches pulled together into the centre to create a little like sheaf of wheat. So three straight stitches up at the centre, slide under to the left, slide under to the right and back down at the centre and pull three and that's sheaf stitch. Just to recap that's our stitches for August, we're looking at standalone stitches so we looked at a blanket stitch wheel and a lazy daisy, they were recaps from previous months. Then we did fishbone stitch, road stitch, crow's foot, sprat's head, star stitch, Algerian eye, then we did a raised cup and then ermine stitch and sheaf stitch. So these are the stitches we're going to play with this month. I hope you've enjoyed those, very different kind of stitches to anything that we've done before. Get practicing and I look forward to seeing you in our first August video. If you've enjoyed that, don't forget to give us a like. If you want to learn some more stitches, I will put our stitch guide playlist down here and I'll put a video up here that's best for you. If you'd like to subscribe, you can click on the Feather Stitch House logo over here. Happy stitching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.